welcome everybody to the Kona Shane Veterinary Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Andy Work. Guys, I got a good one today. I am here with Dr. Shannon Emmon. Shannon is a uh, she is a practice owner and a practicing veterinarian in Maine, and she is a member of the board of directors for Not One More Vet or NAMVI, as they're commonly known. She is here today talking about NAMVI and all of the initiatives they have rolling out, and boy, they have a lot of them. If you are still thinking of NAMVI as a Facebook group, this is going to be a big, fun episode for you because they have a ton of initiatives that are coming out, and we hit some of the highlights, not nearly all the stuff they have going on, but I'm really interested in what do we do about supporting mental health and wellness in the vet profession, and they are putting their money where their mouth is. They are doing the work. They uh, have a lot of programs coming out. It is a really interesting download on all things NAMBI and what they have going on. Guys, this episode is made possible and brought to you ad-free by my friends at Siva Animal Health. They are partnering with NAMBI on their Healing Broken Hearts initiative. This is uh, this is a joint wellness program they have with NAMBI where they are giving 5% of Cardalis sales to NAMBI. Uh, Cardalis is a drug for heart failure. If you're unfamiliar with it, I'll put a link in the show notes to a previous episode that we've done on Cardalis and what it is. Um, but yeah, it's um, thanks to them for one, for doing the work and supporting NAMBI. And thanks to them for supporting this episode and making it possible. Guys, let's get into this. This is your show, we're glad you're here, we want to help you in your veterinary career, welcome to the Cone of Shame with Dr. Andy Rourke. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Shannon Emmons, how are you? I am good, Andy, how are you? I am so good. I I feel like like we almost could have done this podcast in person. Uh, for those who don't know you, you are a practice owner in uh, in Maine. What part of Maine do you live in? Uh, southern Maine. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let's. <laughs> no, you all know where I'm from. I was it's just <laughs> yeah. okay. It's, yeah. it's, it's not Bar Harbor uh, in Maine. I wish. Like that's what no. I, I. That's where I was. <laughs> I just got back last night. I did the oh, family no vacation. Kidding. We went to Bangor and then to Bar Harbor and then up to Nova Scotia and PEI, which is where you went to vet school. That's where I went to vet school. I know. (laughs) And so it's just like, I was looking at your bio and I'm like, gosh, Shannon's like, she's like, she's like Visa. She's everywhere I want to be. Um, (laughs) And so anyway, it's, uh, it is a joy and a pleasure to have you on the podcast. You are uh, a practicing vet, as I said before, you're on the board of directors at NAMVI, which is not one more veterinarian. And I wanted to get you on today to talk a bit about NAMVI. Um, there's not many organizations that I have seen that have grown as fast or has branched out as much as NAMVI has. And I don't know that a lot of people understand like what all NAMVI is doing right now. And so just to kind of set the scene, my first interaction with the Not One More Vet group was a Facebook group, which was great. But it was a very big, very raucous Facebook group uh, about mental health and wellness in veterinarians. And that's that's kind of how it imprinted in my mind. And I was just kind of shocked recently at how inaccurate that is as far as a depiction of Nambi. So let me just let me just pause here and kind of uh, ask you. Um, why don't why don't you give us a little bit of background about sort of Nambi and sort of your path to the board of directors? Sounds good. So uh, NAMVI started in 2014 after uh, the death of Dr. Sophia Yin. Nicole MacArthur, who is a vet, was really blown away that we as a profession have such a high rate of suicide. And she said, you know, if I don't know about this, I'm sure there are other people who don't. And like, how can we get resources to everyone or just check in on everybody. So the Facebook forum started and, you know, I graduated in 2017 and it was, it was cool to watch because as I joined the Facebook forum, I was seeing the need for, we were doing GoFundMes for fellow vets to try and raise money for their inpatient therapy or, you know, they needed help. And, and then it got, you know, nonprofit status and it just, blew up. Uh, and even since I've been involved, I started working with NAMVI in 2021. We've put on a couple of huge new programs in addition to a lot of already existing programs that we've been able to continue to grow. So I started, um, I after my own mental health crisis, uh, 
I had a friend reach out and say, hey, I kind of want to figure out how we can get Navi locally. And I was like, that's great because I could have used someone uh, locally. And uh, so I talked to Carrie Journey and she said, hey, we're already working on that. So I joined as part of what's called the Ambassadors program, and we started making local chapters. So there are Namvi chapters popping up all over the U.S. We have one in Canada now, and we have one in Brazil. So that was kind of my baby um, for a while, was getting that up and running. And it then led me to the Education Committee, Okay. Which, hold on, hold on. I, I want to I want to jump in here. So so, t- so tell me more about that. What, what does what does not like what does a local non-V chapter actually look like? So I'm I'm a veterinarian. I'm here in South Carolina. If there was a local non-V chapter, like what, what does it, what does that mean? Do, is is there uh, they have meetings? Is, is it a meetup? You sort of what is help me get my head around like what practically is that? So it's whatever the community needs. Really, um, we have guidelines for kind of you know what you can and can't do in terms of like you can't talk badly about people or something like that but um we have groups that do like texas is our definitely by far our biggest chapter mallory preston who's in charge of that has really done a lot of webinars and texas is a huge state so they're not meeting in person a lot though they have um they're doing a lot of webinars you know meetings with local people and whether that's educational or whether that's like walking through a guided meditation, our chapter. So I helped form um, Navi New England. We are helping with the Navi Gala, which is going to be in Boston in October. So we're doing some CE there. We're going to be doing an outreach event there. Um, And we're also helping with the 5k in Boston. And We've done, um, we did a veterinary appreciation event and all of the chapters have really made their own takes with it, um, which is really great to see um, because it could be as simple as just getting people together for coffee or going for a walk, or it can be, you know, a big organization, um, however people want to do it, what the need is in their community. But the big thing is that there are people available locally if somebody needs help. Yeah, I, I I love that. It just um, I've always felt like when you're trying to run something that's that's a national program, getting people who are inspired on the ground and giving them the autonomy to kind of do the things that they're excited about or they see a need for. I think that's wildly underrated as far as how to set up an organization. I've always seen it be very successful. And um, it just, for, for something like Nambi, where you obviously have people who care a lot about mental health and wellness, um, giving them a platform and just sort of saying, hey, figure out what's gonna be helpful, uh, you know, for the, for the people in your area uh, and, and make it happen. I, I think that that's, um, I love that flexibility. I think a lot of times you can come up with things that are prescribed that don't really meet the needs of individuals. You know, they might might work in one place, but it's not what other people are really looking for. It's been great to see people be able to do what their community needs and get the help into their communities, whatever that may be. And, you know, they're, they're at local conferences meeting vets in their area they're doing local events and it's been great to just build that community um from an organization that was largely virtual and that's like what you said people know nomvi for the forums um but they don't realize like just how much else there is to nomvi and the help that's available rather than just the facebook groups which are great um and we've expanded off of them you know there's the um support staff group as well and that's i think one thing i would love for everyone to know is we are not just for vets we're for everyone in the vet profession um that that was a that was a big point of growth for you guys because for a long time it was just veterinarians and it was it was kind of a, a pain point there with support support staff and, you know, paraprofessionals and things. And, um, and yeah, w- so when did you guys start uh, having groups for the support staff? Uh, I will be honest, I'm not sure exactly the year on that, but I believe it was just a couple of years kind of after everything got going because we really needed support staff to have help yeah. too. I yeah. mean, everyone in this profession has a hard time. It's, you know, we all have our different uh, battles we have to deal with on a day-to-day basis. So um, 
making sure and then students too we branched out to vet students because and vet tech students it's not easy to go through vet school or tech school and to make sure those people have support as well um was something that we decided also needed to be taken care of well how do um how many well how about, about how many chapters are there now so talking switching back to the ambassadors i oh, mean sure. what, are, what are we talking about um, I believe there are nine now. Okay. Um, so it's it's always a little bit of a process just because we have to go through like volunteer onboarding just so that we make sure people are adhering to NAMBI's guidelines in terms of, you know, talking about suicide in a healthy way, making sure people are QPR trained, which is the suicide um prevention training. So anybody who gets involved with NAMBI has to go through that process. So uh, we really just launched the chapters about a year ago. And we're, we're excited that, I mean, Brazil is awesome. We've already yeah. got, a, you know, an international chapter, which is incredible. So we keep and we keep having people apply too. it's just a little bit to get them up and running. So I think that's our big um, pausing point right now. But we keep getting the interest and we keep getting the people who are, like you said, really excited and really want to do things in their communities. How, um, how can people find out about uh, chapters around them? If people are interested in, in trying to get uh, their own chapter going or getting involved with the ambassador program, I mean, how would you advise people to get involved? So there's uh, navi.org is going to be our best resource for all things navi and there's a list of our chapters um and each chapter has a facebook group which is not necessarily like a private facebook group i should say a facebook page where they post um whatever they want to you know whether it's ways to support one another, local events that they're doing. And then each chapter also has their own email address. Uh, so right now I'd say go to the page, see if there's anyone local. And if there's not, that can be you. So <laughs> yeah, I love it. Cool. Talk to me. Uh, talk to me about some other things that you guys have, have started expanded out into. So I talked to Brian Borkman on the pod, podcast not long ago about the Nambi Clear Blueprint, which I think is is fascinating for workplace wellness. I, I just, I, I just, it's a, it's a great program. I've thought a lot about since I had him on to talk uh, to talk with him. But yeah, to, to lay out lay out some of the other things that you guys are doing. So yeah, Clear um, is amazing and has been really exciting in the past year We've since we started that. Uh, another one that's newer is called Lifeboat. It's an anonymous peer-to-peer -peer support group. So for the people who don't like the Facebook forums or aren't on social media, yeah. it allows them that same one-on-one -on -one support and mentorship uh, and can get them in touch with the help that they need and it's completely anonymous. So that's um, that's been a really great new program that we've gotten a lot of use of. And I know um, one of our former board members just mentioned she was at a conference, uh, I think, two days ago, and someone said Lifeboat saved their life because it, wow. you know, somebody was able to get the help that they needed. So uh, is that uh, is this sort of a stand standalone web page as well, I guess? Um, it's on the NAMV website, um, but then you get invited into you know we're, we're very careful about anonymity we're very careful about who gets into veterinary things because you hate to think about it but the public um can hold things against us um in ways we don't necessarily always expect so we're very careful about who can get in and who can be involved but they get in um they're assigned a person you can if you want to be somebody's mentor support you can also enroll for lifeboat and there's resources in there on how to talk to people about certain subjects and what to do if this is happening and it, it gives you the resources to be able to help and we know that like i'm not a mental health professional i'm a veterinarian um so there is always that like if you don't know what to do there's always a way to find the help that you need for whatever that may be. And Lifeboat gives a lot of opportunities for education in that regard. But again, if you know, if you need the help, uh, you can get in there, get matched with somebody and then start talking. Okay. Um, you said um, the public can hold 
things against us. Tell, tell me a little bit more about what you mean about that, because I'm, I'm curious about sort of the challenges that Nambi's faced. You know, uh, obviously, it's a delicate balance when you're trying to help veterinarians who are in practice, you know, facing mental health struggles and things. But beyond that, tell, tell me what you meant, sort of meant when you said that. So uh, I'll talk about another program while I'm talking about this, but we just recently formed the Anti-Cyber Harassment Task Force Okay. Um, in light of uh, MVMC had uh, the huge cyberbullying attack last year uh, where they took an owner's surrender in and it yeah. ended up going like all over the world. It ended up being yeah, this that huge was a nightmare. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So I'm local to them. And so <laughs> um, I was really invested and Rare Breed, who owns MVMC, said like, what can we do to make sure this never happens again? Or at least like if it happens again, like we have the resources, how do we get people the resources? So uh, we've had to be careful with that too, because <laughs> we don't want the general public who could potentially come back and use this stuff against us to have access to the resources we're trying right. to offer, gotcha. you know, veterinarians, veterinary practice owners to combat cyber harassment. So um, there's always, and <laughs> there are Facebook groups that are like attacking vets. And yeah. there, oh, yeah. there are always those groups that just have to be the negative in the world and start stuff <laughs> that is so inappropriate. It's great. You'd be blown away by the stuff that we do oh, yeah. sometimes so uh, i can no i can imagine I, <laughs> i've been around uh, the old social media internet world for a while i can imagine um so i'm curious so how um when you think about the future and you think about health and wellness in vet medicine how how optimistic or 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 pessimistic are you like when you look at this is this do you feel good about the progress we've made in the last 10 years? Do you feel like we have big challenges ahead? Uh, talk to me a little bit about, you know, because you get up every day and you go into practice and you do your stuff and you step up and you're, let's say, an ambassador for your region and you're on the, the board of directors at NAMVI. Talk, talk to me a little bit about the headspace that you get in when you think about kind of where things are going as far as mental health and wellness in the vet profession. I think, I think we have dueling pros and cons and it's hard to say just kind of how things are going to go because i think we as a society are starting to value mental health more which is amazing people are talking about it there's less of a stigma people are asking for mental health days off people are asking for the time that they need what you know whatever it may be but then we get the pushback too from business owners of like oh you know, they're complaining about having to work 40 hours a week or, you know, whatever it may be. So there's there's that kind of push and pull. Uh, and then there's the lack of veterinary professionals. I think the shortages that we're all dealing with. I mean, I've been hiring for an associate for a year and a half, and I know clinics that have been hiring for years. And if you look in our area, everyone's hiring for a vet. Yeah. Everyone's hiring for techs. And that. I think is hard because those of us who are still here are taking on all that extra burden. And as you know, it with COVID, it didn't get easier. We saw that huge increase in pet adoption rate and where did all of the vet staff go? So that's my biggest concern. But I think that as NAMVI continues to grow and we continue to make these programs that make vet med more sustainable, the more we talk about it, the more we make people aware of ways that they can get the help and they don't need to suffer through a bad job or they don't need to um, worry about cyber harassment. If we can take some of the load off, we're trying our best to do that from every angle. Yeah. What are you most excited about when you look at Nambi and you look at all the things that are coming out in, in the next, say, five years? Like you're just, you're looking ahead and, and you go, this is, this makes me smile or this makes me happy or this makes me feel really positive. I, uh we're, we're planning a NAMVI conference. It's in our kind of our five-year plan to have a NAMVI conference. And we're going to do a little baby conference at our gala this fall. Uh, okay. So it'd be nice to just dip our toes in the water. But I would love for us to have a way to get 
people, the mental health resources, like come to this conference, we're going to make it, you know, mental health friendly, we'll probably do half days and then take it easy the rest of the day. You know, it's still very early in the works. We have no concrete plans, but I am really looking forward to that. Um, And just meeting the people in our veterinary community. Every time I speak, every time I go to a conference on behalf of Namvi, hearing how much we've done for people, um, it, it means you know that what we're doing is important and it's helping, and it just definitely makes me want to keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. How um, real quick, I'm going to let you shout out any other programs you guys have coming up. Uh, anything else that you're that you're working on that that uh, that you feel like people should know that is either uh, has come out recently from Nambi or is in the pipelines that people should be looking for? Um, I think the big thing that's coming up that I would like people to know about is our race around the world, which is um, virtual, but we also have an in person option this year. So it's during the month of September, and we are just promoting Nambi and general public awareness, making sure people know what we are and do it with exercising, which is good for our mental health. And it's one of our biggest fundraisers for the year, too. So you can join as an individual virtually in person. You can start a team. My clinic competes with a clinic up the street every year, and we're already like trash talking one another. (laughs) (laughs) You know, get a little competition going. It's all in good fun. But um it's it's whatever you want it to be. Um, but I'm really excited that we have the in-person race, um, which is going to be at our gala in Boston on October 7th. Um, and we have Temple Grandin coming to that. So that's very exciting. Yeah, and we want to thank everyone who helps our organization on a day-to-day. Um, Siva in particular is currently running Healing Broken Hearts program where they're donating 5% of Cardalis sales, which we super appreciate. And we have so many other great sponsors who help us to do our work on a day-to-day basis because without, without them, we would not be able to do so much of what we do. That's fantastic. I'm going to put links in the show notes to all the stuff we've talked about. Uh, I'll, I'll mention uh, the clear blueprint. Uh, you know, Brian was on recently talking about it. I'll put li- uh, links to information on that as well. Uh, Nambi.org, uh, where you can find the ambassador program information, all the things that we talked about, uh, the lifeboat uh, links. I, I'll put all that stuff in the show notes so everybody has it. Um, are there any other links, Shannon, that or resources that you think people should uh, make sure to check out or be aware of? Nomvi's list is on the website. Um, so basically anything I'm saying to you, you can get from the website, but Nomvi's list is uh, kind of like Angie's list, but for veterinary professionals. So if somebody has a therapist locally that they've really liked or a lawyer they've locally really liked, it's a great way to find local resources. Um, and I'll send you to the link to the Race Around the World sign up and to our gala registration. Sounds great. I'll put all that stuff into the show note. Uh, Dr. Shannon Emmons, thank you so much for being here. Guys, thanks for tuning in and listening. Take care of yourselves, everybody. And that's it. That's our episode. That's what I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Out of it. Thanks to Shannon for being here. Thanks to Namvi for all the work they're doing for our profession. Thanks to Siva Animal Health for making this episode ad-free and for their Healing Broken Hearts initiative. Gang, take care of yourselves. Be well. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.